Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And a good Easter morning to you. It is Resurrection Day, and we have come together in this format to celebrate the risen Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this time of worship, and I pray that it is not only an opportunity to view and listen to a message, but that you will truly be in an attitude of worship over these next few minutes. Good Easter morning. I'm Pastor Tom Stevenson from First Christian Church in Wilmington, Ohio, and I greet you in the name and in the spirit of Jesus Christ. I invite you for these few moments to join me as we listen to and unpack the Word of God for this day. Our scripture reading comes from Paul's book to the Romans, chapter 6, verse 4. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for we offer this prayer through Jesus Christ, the risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Story goes that the boss dialed his employee's number, but a child answered, Hello? Is your daddy home? Yes, whispered the small voice. May I talk to him? But the child whispered, No. Well, is your mommy there? Yes. May I talk to her? No, she's with the police. Wondering why a cop was at his employee's home, the boss asked, May I speak to the police? No, they're busy talking to mommy and daddy and the firefighter. Really concerned now, he heard a whirring noise through the phone and asked, What's that? A helicopter, answered the child. What's going on there? asked the alarmed boss. In a hushed voice, the child answered, The search team has just landed. Now scared and frustrated, the boss asked, what are they searching for? And still whispering, the child giggled, <laughs> me. Doesn't it seem that each Easter we ask the same questions of scripture? What's going on there? And what are they searching for? Our faith and our Bibles tell us that the resurrection is the pivotal truth in Christianity. It is at the center of our faith and the heart of our preaching, teaching, and witness to the world about this Jesus. But what's really going on here, and what are all these people searching for? Too often we thought of resurrection as a happening at the two extremes of Christian history. The resurrection is either an event in the life of Jesus that occurred at a particular time and place and happened in the presence of a particular group of people who saw their crucified teacher and friend laid in a tomb and raised to new life on the first day of the week. Or we think of the resurrection at the other end of Christian history as a distant moment which has not yet occurred in which all the dead in Christ shall be raised from their graves. But Jesus said, No one knows about that day or hour, only the Father. And this about sums up our knowledge on the biblical theme of resurrection. Now, if you thought of the resurrection in these historical terms, you would be absolutely in line with Christian teaching. Jesus was raised from the dead, and we too shall be raised from death to life. Got it. Believe it. Next topic. But there is more here than mere history. From whichever end you look, another vein of gold that has been largely untapped. This perspective on the resurrection has gone unnoticed and unpracticed among many Christians 
and the churches they inhabit. Resurrection is God's victory over death through Jesus. But resurrection is more than a single event in the life of Christ or the history of what will one day happen to us in the world. Resurrection is also a way of life, a resurrection living, where those who follow Jesus seek to speak, breathe, and live their faith in life-giving ways. These testify to the new life, the resurrected life that Jesus not only is bringing, but has already brought into the world. This isn't just a reminder of a past happening, nor is it just a promise of the life to come, a means to pacify those who suffer and need a spiritual carrot to help them forget the stick that's banging away at their lives. Our resurrections have already begun in Jesus' own rising. And he is raised to new life. Those who follow him begin to live in and through the life of Christ. And if Christ is in me, so is the power of resurrection living. In Romans 6, 4, which I read a moment ago, Paul said the way we participate in Christ's death and resurrection is through our baptisms, having gone down into the water, a symbol of death, and raised up from the water, a symbol of victory over death, resurrection. But Paul's concern isn't to teach the symbolic meaning of baptism. That's important but his main point is that through baptism, we not only begin, but continue our new life in Christ. The resurrection makes it possible to walk in newness daily, which entails everything we do and every relationship in which we share. Has your baptism made a difference in the person you are and are becoming? If we take the resurrection life seriously, what would walking in newness of life look like in our daily lives? Relegating our discipleship to an ancient history lesson or unfulfilled hope leaves us and the world with nothing more than superficial spirituality, which is easily disrupted when issues challenge us. How impoverished is our discipleship because we don't understand that resurrection is for living our Christianity in concrete ways. The Bible says the followers of Jesus are in the world, but not of it. But it is clear that we are in the world. This is our home where we express our faith in the risen Lord and Savior. He is risen. The tomb is empty. And the promise of his living, active presence in our lives is full to overflowing. Three buddies die in a car wreck and go to heaven for orientation. St. Peter asked each of them, when you're in your casket and friends and family are mourning over you, what would you like to hear them say about you? First guy says, I like to hear them say I was a great doctor and a great dad. Second guy says, I'd like to hear that I was a wonderful husband and school teacher who made a huge difference for the children of tomorrow. Last guy looks at the others and then at St. Peter and says, well, I just want to hear him say, look, he's moving. Might that also be the hope of Jesus when he looks at the church stretched out before him? Look, she's moving again. In Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, we find a concrete example of the resurrection life, wherein the resurrection not only changes lives, but changes the community as well. Listen as Luke reveals the interior life of the first church. 
Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. <clears throat> the kingdom of God has broken into the world and into this congregation. It has overcome death, big D, and all the little deaths we encounter through our lives and in the world. Little deaths like the loss of employment, broken relationships, the despair or depression so many experience, disease and pandemics that threaten our bodies and sense of well-being. And let's not forget all the social sins that we find in our world. War, hunger, racism, homelessness, pay inequity, and so much more. The disciples of Jesus then and now testify that the resurrection is the power of God to raise to new life any aspect of our living, to defeat death and dying wherever we encounter them. And everywhere we experience new life and participate in resurrection living, it is our purpose and privilege to speak this good news to those we meet along the way, especially if they are still caught in the grip of death. On Easter Sunday, in the presence of the risen Christ, the witnesses become bearers of God's good news to the followers of Jesus and through them to the whole world. When we finally learn that resurrection has not only happened, but is ongoing, then faith, hope, purpose, direction, energy, and life can be renewed in us, in our church, and in the world where we dwell. The resurrection of Jesus is not just a spiritual maxim, but a flesh and bone truth. Jesus is physically alive, not a ghost, apparition, or grief-induced delusion. God offers real life to Jesus and to those who follow him. This is new creation, the world God intended from the beginning. Life is returned to its proper state, and the purpose of the church is to proclaim that God's doing has made a difference for eternity. Yes, that's true. But also that God's doing has made a difference here and now. What difference has your relationship with the risen Christ made in the world that you inhabit? Have you discovered a practical way of expressing your faith in school, work, at home, and in the public square. The resurrection is powerfully proclaimed in the early church because the gift of the spirit of life creates a state of grace over the whole community, so much so that it even provides economic justice among the people. The resurrection life God offers changes everything. It is literally life out of death in every aspect, spiritually, physically, emotionally, relationally, rationally, economically, and socially. What enabled the Acts 4 church to share their resources to the degree that they would even sell homes for the good of the community? How do you explain this new economic life? Can you offer an example of resurrection justice that you've witnessed? More to the point, can you offer an example of resurrection justice that you've participated in? What empowers us to make a difference among the little deaths 
that we encounter in the world. It is the resurrection, which is for today, for this moment, and for us. Friends, he is risen. There was a man who traveled to Jerusalem with his wife and his ever-nagging mother-in-law. While there, the mother-in-law passed away. The undertaker told him, well, we can ship her home for $5,000, or you can bury her here in the Holy Land for 150 bucks. The man thought about it and said, well, I'm just going to have to ship her home. The undertaker asked, why would you spend $5,000 to ship your mother-in-law home when it would be so wonderful to bury her in the Holy Land and only spend $150? The man simply replied, long ago a man died here, was buried here, and three days later rose from the dead. Buddy, I just can't take that chance. Well, can you take that chance? Disciples of Christ, long ago a man died, was buried, and three days later rose from the dead. Isn't it time that we take a chance on this resurrection? This living, breathing, flesh and bone Jesus who wants to inhabit our lives and our living. Isn't it time we take a chance that this is what we have longed for and so desperately needed in our hearts and homes, in our community, and yes, in the world? That resurrection is not so much for the history books or for the long-range projections, but it's for today, for making a difference in the world that is still loved by God, so much so that he gave his only begotten Son. My friends, may Christ's resurrection life be in you and be experienced by others through you, this day and forever. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, risen Lord and Savior, we come before you this day, scattered as we are, but one in the Spirit, that we might think on these things, that we might hear the Word of God read and proclaimed, that we might come to terms again with what it means not only to bear witness to the resurrection, but to live into that new hope, that new creation, so that the world you desire, the world you envision, might become a reality. Bless us and this broken world this world that is struggling so mightily against a terrible disease. And we pray that you would bring resurrection through this experience and that we may come to know on the other end that the tomb is empty. He is risen indeed for us, in us, and through us. For this we pray in the name of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you again for uh, spending time with us. We hope very soon that we'll be able to get back together in the sanctuary and celebrate with one another, eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder, what it means to be in this resurrection community. Until next time, stay safe and may the Lord bless you. Amen.